I'm back at it again. Uh, sorry that this room looks very plain. I just moved into my my new room here in college, and I don't have any of my posters up whatsoever, or any of my frames or anything. So it's just kind of a blank wall. Sorry, uh, but I just want to get on here real quick, take care of some unfinished business regarding these reviews. For those that are wondering why I went back and watched all of the 2012 indie shows that I missed in the summer of last year, it is because I am a freak and a completionist. Honestly, I have no other answer for it. There's nothing that made me want to do this. It's just like I felt like I had to. And I did. I'm a completionist. What can I say? I saw all the 2012 ROH shows, all the 2012 PWG, all the 2012 Dragon Gate. I haven't, I don't have them all in the description box because the description box wouldn't fit. So I'm going to have to do another video. So basically I'm going to come up with topics to talk about once a week, it's like 10 minutes long, and then I'll just, in the description box, be rolling out these Tales of 12 reviews. I'm almost done for, with everything. I think I only have three shows for 2012 that I need to see. Yes, I'm that much of a freak. It's fucking September and I'm still doing this. Um, but... I've also seen some of the shows of 2013. I've seen the almost the entire Dragon Gate USA triple shot from January. I'm just missing the second half of the last show. So yeah, those will get out rolling pretty soon. Um, I'm finding bits and pieces of time in between the day to watch them. So I'll get that out to you guys. But I just need like, I need some time to upload it all. Uh, ROH television, I haven't been watching. I've been kind of busy lately. But I guess I'll catch up on it at some point. We'll talk about it out. Talk about it on here. I usually catch up on the TV before the next iPay-per-view, but there is no iPay-per-view. I guess the next big show, which is the Philly show, uh, September 21st, I'll try to catch up on all the TV before then. I can do that. So, there's that. And yeah, that's this is just me coming on here talking with Daniel Bryan. Um, but yeah, as far as the shows, so I can just officially clear these out of my list. Part of the reason I'm also doing this is uh, most of you, those of you that know how I run my business, I have a huge Word document with all these shows I need to review. Um, my Word document is getting humongous because it has almost 30 shows on there from ROH, Dragon Gate USA, and PWG. So I'm just trying to clear it out so there's more room and it looks nicer than what it does now. Um, but let me just go over through these very quickly. Bound for Glory from 2012. The show is pretty good. Uh, Austin Aries Jeff Hardy was really good. The hardcore match, the Street Fighter was really good. That tag match was really good. Really underrated in my opinion. Everything else was there, but those three matches were strong enough to kind of carry the rest of the show. The Sting and Bully Ray match was all right. I didn't hate it. The Joe Magnus match was fun for the time it lasted. Joey Ryan Al Snow I even kind of liked. I not liked, just didn't hate. It was I was mildly entertained for a few minutes. There's that. That's that with that show. The ROH 2012 house shows, I will say this. The only like long-standing statement I will say is that I do think they were kind of the the quality of these shows was kind of underrated everyone was acting like all these house shows sucked they didn't suck two there were only two shows on here that i didn't enjoy killer instinct which i really didn't enjoy the first half that first half is one of the worst first half of wrestling i've ever seen that tag team elimination match was one of the worst matches i've seen for ring of honor in a while um second half kind of made up for it because davy the main event is really good really underrated kevin steen and jay Leaf. i really enjoyed that uh, that probably would have made my list had I had I watched this show before I did the top 100 matches of the year. Uh, Davey and Mike Mondo was a lot of fun, and I did not like their Nightmare Begins match, but that match was fun. And Roddy and Kyle O'Reilly was enjoyable. So second half kind of made up for it, but the first half was awful. Every other show I had fun with, except for A Nightmare Begins, but we'll get to that. Um, very quickly, Unity and Rising Above, both were good shows. Rising Above started out meh. I mean, right, 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 Rising Above started out pretty good. The middle was meh with the Roddy J. Lethal match, which I thought went way too long and was not entertaining at all. And the Briscoe's Wrestling Greatest Tag Team match, which was blech. But the main event is my most underrated match of 2012. Davey Richards versus Adam Cole. I've heard no hype about this match whatsoever. The match was awesome in my opinion. Great match. The most underrated match in 2012 in all of wrestling. Did not get the love it deserved. I thought that match was great. Um, that made the show for me. And the Unity show was just really consistent. Every sh every match was very enjoyable for the most part. Uh, the Wrestling Creators Tag Team Team Ambition match, I loved the first 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes that were really enjoyable. The last 7, 8 minutes sucked bad. So it was almost like two different matches. It was so fucking weird. The first the first 10 minutes were really good. And then for whatever reason, they won another 8 minutes. And those 8 minutes sucked. So the match was just kind of okay. 
Um, the Battle of Richmond. I enjoyed this show. This show got a lot of. I know. I know. I gave it the same overall rating as Killer Instinct, but Killer Instinct has a really good main event. Um, whereas this show doesn't have anything like really great, but everything is fun. Everything is enjoyable. You know, like Adam Cole Chompa was fun. A1 and Totally Awesome surprised the hell out of me. That match was pretty good, I thought. Um, Jay Briscoe and Charlie Hollis had a fun Lights Out match. It was very short, but it was a lot of fun for the time it lasted. You know, the, the wrestling's greatest tag team matches. The booking kind of sucked, but those weren't really bad matches. They were just kind of there. Jay Lethal and Mike Mondo was all right. The Briscoes versus the House of Truth, Mike Logan and Roderick Strong. You know, I thought that was, thought that was decent. Nothing was horrible. Nothing was that good. That's why the show doesn't have a higher rating. I enjoyed most everything, but at the end of the day, when you're paying 15, 20 bucks for a DVD, you gotta have at least like one really good match or very good match, in my opinion. You didn't get it here, so that's why it didn't doesn't get a higher rating. But the show's the show's fun. I liked it. It reminds me a lot of No Surrender 2011. That's a TNA pay per view that a lot of people shot on because the match quality wasn't that good. But while the match quality wasn't that good, almost every match was kind of enjoyable, so I didn't mind it. Um, Live Strong. Live Strong was a good show. The the Briscoes versus Charlie Mike Logan and Rhino match was really fun. Rhino was awesome in Ring of Honor. Eddie Edwards and Ciampa was really good. That was a really, really good match. Kyle and Jay had a really good match. And the main event was fun. It just it was a little short, but Kevin Cena Strong had a very entertaining match. Uh, Bruce City Beatdown was another really good one. Mike Logan and Silas Young. Rhino again and Eddie Edwards. Rhino was a lot of fun in Ring of Honor. The main event, I think, is a great main event. I've talked about it before. That six-man tag was fun, you know. That was very, very another very, very good show. Cage hostility I enjoyed. The Jay Lethal Adam Page match, one of my most underrated. That match and the Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander versus the Barra matches are like two and three as far as most underrated matches for Ring of Honor last year. One is Davy Richards Adam Cole. Two is the Bravados match. Three is Lethal and Page. That might be the best match I've ever seen from the Bravados Coleman or Alexander. Period. And the best match I've seen from Adam Page. And one of Jay Lethal's better matches in Ring of Honor. Um, that opener is so much fucking fun. One of the most underrated openers in wrestling. Uh, the rest of the show is, you know, kind of the wrestling's greatest tag team match wasn't so fun. But Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly I thought was really enjoyable. And the main event I thought was fun while it lasted. So another good show. You know? Uh, Killer Instinct, like I said, wasn't that good. But Cage Hostility was fun. And Bruce City Beatdown was fun. Live Strong was fun. Battle of Richmond was fun. Rising Above was started out... The middle was kind of meh, but it ended fun. Uh, Unity was fun. These shows are really underrated. I don't know why ROH, the house shows, got all the hate that it did. A Nightmare Begins was the worst Ring of Honor show I've ever seen. I stand by that. I have not... I've seen a lot of the famous Terrible Ring of Honor shows, but I have not seen Trio's Tournament 2005, Escalation, Battle for Supremacy. Those three are kind of like viewed as like the top three worst i think maybe throw suffocation in there haven't seen those four but of the ones i've seen and mind you i've seen a lot this was the worst one i've ever seen the main event the the um, what you gonna call it the briscoes versus totally awesome match maybe the worst match in ring of water history that match is awful awful just, they had the radio DJs involved, it was corny, it was stupid, the finish was terrible, the interference sucked, just awful. The main event also sucks. Jay Briscoe and Charlie Haas, that Texas death match is terrible. How you have to wait 43 seconds for someone to get up is insane. They have the three second pin count, then you have to wait 30 seconds, and then they have 10 seconds to get up. So it's 43 seconds, some guys to be down. And the finish is awful. Hated that match. Fucking hated that match. And it's a shame because if they just did a normal WWE last man standing match, it probably could have been pretty good. But the stipulation just killed it. It worked hard, but sorry. This is the worst night of Jay Briscoe's career. And it's not even his fault. I felt bad for him. Um, what else? What other shit is on the show? Mike Mondo and Davey Richards, probably the worst Davey Richards match I've ever seen. That match was really dull and really just basic. Didn't like it at all. Their match at Killer Instinct was a lot better because Mondo got better. The four-way was all right, but the finish I didn't like. Enjoyable. I'll admit, but the finish I didn't like. Jay Lethal versus Mike Logan I really didn't like for whatever reason. It just didn't resonate with me. The match went like 18 minutes, and it just did not click with me whatsoever. I was not a fan of that one. And like I said, two awful matches. The reason the show doesn't get completely buried is because the opener was good, and Kevin Steen versus Eddie Edwards was another really underrated match last year. 
That match is really, really, really good. Eddie Edwards, I feel, is at this point the most underrated wrestler in the Indies. Because like every every show he's on in this in this run, he puts on a really good match. He has a fun match with Rhino. He puts on a really good match with Tommaso Ciampa. A really good match here with Kevin Steen. Let me just look through the rest. He had a fun match with Mike Bennett. That was that yeah, was solid. But you know, he had a good match with Mike Bennett. He just looking on the Unity show. Oh, that's right. He wasn't. He wasn't. In, he wasn't in that weekend. At Killer Instinct, he had a decent match with Cole and the Briscoes. You know, at did he wrestle at Cage Hostility? Guess not. But when he was on and he had a singles match on most of these shows, I mean, he delivered. So he does not get the love he deserves. That match is really, really good. That's one of my favorite Kevin Steen title defenses, actually. Um, so because of that one match, I'm not going to completely bury the show. But the show was bad. It was a bad, bad, bad show. It was bad. The worst Ring of Honor show I've ever seen. Don't watch it. And so yeah, that's about it. I'll have more next week. I'll cover the Dragon Gate USA shows, which I have a ton of. I'll cover the PWG shows, which I also have a lot of. I just have a lot of fucking. This document... This Word document is 13 pages long. So, yeah. I got a lot of shit to cover. But I'm going to get it done. No worries. Um, now, as far as this Daniel Bryan thing, a lot of people have been talking about I haven't really given my two cents on it yet. Obviously, I was very happy that he won. And I honestly thought everyone was freaking out over the ending at SummerSlam. Not saying I didn't care, but I don't know. He won the WWE title. Was I the only one that was happy enough with that? Like, he won the championship. No matter what, he is a former WWE champion for the rest of his career. That's awesome. You know? For me, that was, for me, that was enough. I, I expected the finish, but for me, just being able to call him the former WWE champion, for me, that's enough. And the finish was the way it was, but I was content with it, honestly. The booking on Raw... At first, I was okay with it. Week one, I was okay with it. Week two, I was a little, ah. Uh. Week three, now it's getting ridiculous. The perception of Daniel Bryan is not good right now. He's getting he's getting over. He's built up to be this big star. The fans are behind him. But people don't know this. His segment, two weeks ago now, because Raw is not yet. Two weeks ago, his gauntlet with the Shield, with, uh, with Rollins, Reign, and Ambrose, where he only had the match with Rollins, and then he immediately got disqualified in the Ambrose match and the Reigns match. Um, or the Shield immediately got disqualified. That segment gained a million viewers. It was, this, I believe, the biggest or the second biggest gross segment all in all of 2013. He's getting over. There's people that are saying, oh, the fans love him, but it's not translating to business. Bullshit. He gained a million viewers in the segment, more so than John Cena did any other week that year. He's obviously becoming a big deal. SummerSlam probably did pretty well, but to be fair, Brock Lesnar and Punk was also on the show. Which, by the way, I've seen I've seen Cena and Daniel Bryan, and that match is awesome. I have not seen Punk Lesnar yet. I will, though, eventually, obviously. Just maybe like in six months, but I'll see. And um, <clears throat> Punk, no, I was going to say, Bryan is becoming a big deal. But I think they're killing it little by little. Last week was absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. The Big Show stuff just sucked. And I don't even mind the whole he's broke thing. I mean, I'm, I obviously I don't believe it. Um, he actually lives. He actually doesn't live too far from me in Florida. Um, but I, it's not that I don't believe it. It's just that... I mean, I do believe it. I, do, I don't believe it. But that's not why I don't like it. That, that part's irrelevant to me. It's just that he should not be the center of this thing. He shouldn't. You know? He should not be the main focal point. And all of Raw, in my opinion, was basically established to the point to show you that Daniel Bryan can't beat the big show. That's not good for the top face in the company. I get the whole point is they wanted to overcome challenges and all this and that, but... Getting a little ridiculous. Like, and I know, I know what people are saying. Oh, but like, you know, that Triple H and Orton are heels. You know, they, they, we're not supposed to believe them when they say that he's not cut out to be a top star. The thing is, I've said this before, and Dave Meltzer says, and I 100% agree with it. When you say something over and over and over again over a long period of time, people kind of start to believe it, even though it may not be true. It's, I'll give you a good example. And granted, it's it's a little different because a face said it. But when I was young, I thought Lance Storm was boring. 
I didn't pay attention to match quality. All I knew was every week on TV, they said he was boring. And I was just like, oh, yeah, this guy's boring. He sucks. And then when he was a face, I still thought he was boring. When he was a face, I was like, I, don't, I still don't want to watch this guy. He sucks. He's boring. Obviously, now I realize how good of a worker Lance was. But back even when they turned him face, I did not care because he was boring to me. Um, on the Daniel Bryan Facebook page, on, on, on a Facebook page, I forget what it was. I read this like a year ago. No, two years ago. It was when Daniel Bryan beat, won, cashed in the money in the bank and won the World Heavyweight Championship at uh, TLC 2011. There was a Facebook page that showed the picture of him and Punk with the champions. It was on the Fan Nation page. And two kids commented on that page, boo, why did Daniel Bryan win? He's so boring. He's no fun to watch. Now, even though Michael Cole's a heel and we weren't supposed to take him seriously because it was repeatedly beaten to our heads over and over and over again that he's boring, that he sucks, and Daniel Bryan wasn't portrayed to be a big deal, he's boring. If Daniel Bryan was, like, kicking ass every week, you know, on Raw, kicking ass, taking names, then, yeah, you could be like, oh, well, obviously Triple H and Randy Orton are ridiculous, you know? He's, he's a monster. They, they don't know how good he is. But when every week he just gets destroyed and they're beating it into your head – He's not a top star. He's not a top star. He's not a top star. And then they beat him and beat him and beat him. You know, eventually, there's. I wouldn't be surprised if there's little kids out there that w w if he wins the title back, they'll just be like, oh, well, that guy's no good. He got his ass kicked every week. That's what happens. See, I do think, I've, I've said this before, and I do think it's very true. Sometimes I think the internet community ha forgets what it's like to be a casual fan. Or more importantly, forgets what it's like to be a kid watching wrestling. A kid watching wrestling should be the ideal way to interpret how someone is getting over because all they're thinking about is do I like this person or not? Nothing else. Uh, is he a face or not? Like you can tell how much from, from that perspective. And I've been in that spot before and that's why I'm going to go back and look at it that way. And I think enough people aren't doing that. And if he loses that night of champions, which everyone's expecting, including myself, that's going to kill him. Because all he's done is get his ass beat every week. What I'm really worried they'll do is they'll have him get his revenge tonight and then lose a Night of Champions. That would suck. At this point, he almost has to win a Night of Champions. I mean, they're doing battle. They have Battleground before Hell in a Cell. If your plan really is to do the blow-off at Hell in a Cell, then switch the title now, switch it back at Battleground, and switch it at Hell in a Cell. I'm not a fan of that booking, but that's how they work. And you just can't keep beating him. It's one thing like with Orn and Christian where Orn was just massacring him every week. And it's like, well, Christian's the heel. Brian's the face. It's now, it's been three Raws. There's the fourth one's tonight and then there's the pay-per-view on Sunday. If he loses on Sunday, then even if he does get his revenge tonight, that's four out of five encounters where he just got his ass kicked. It's not good. And I know he beat John Cena and Randy Orton clean, as clean as possible. They did a great job. No, no interference, no under the table and all, clean as a sheet. But the perception is getting hurt every week. And last week, having him beat again and then taking the center of attention off of him and putting it on Big Show, not saying it killed him, but that really hurt. That really hurt. He at least, at the very least, he's getting his ass kicked. He has to be the top guy. And he has to be the, like, best baby face. But he's not. Big Show's better than him. You spent all of Raw money telling me that he can't beat the Big Show. Big Show's better. Big Show's the one that should fight Randy Orton. Big Show needs to overcome this bullshit thing that Stephanie and Triple H have over him. And he needs to get his revenge and knock out Randy Orton and win the WWE Championship. Oh, fuck Daniel Bryan. He's been getting his ass kicked. Is that really, a little, is that really any farther off than what other people have been saying? Again, we'll watch Raw tonight. We'll see what happens. I'll come back and talk about that. Maybe, maybe even tomorrow. Who knows? But... I'm not a fan of this booking. It's got to change. Those are the reviews for 2012. Thank you all for listening. I'm out. Be back soon. Goodbye.